This week on The Anxious Truth, we're talking about crying and expressing emotion as part of the anxiety recovery process. A lot of people want to know if crying is doing it wrong, and the answer is hell no, it's not doing it wrong. So let's talk about that. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is podcast episode number 199, recorded in March of 2022. One away from the big 200. I have to figure out what I'm going to do for episode 200. I better figure that out quickly. Anyway, if you're new to the podcast, this is your first time here. Welcome. I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of The Anxious Truth. This is the podcast where we care about all things anxiety and anxiety recovery. So if you're struggling with things like panic disorder, panic attacks, or agoraphobia, this is the place for you. Glad you're here. And of course, if you're a returning listener or viewer on YouTube, what up YouTube, uh, then I'm certainly glad you're here. Welcome back. So this week, we're going to talk about the topic of specifically crying, but crying and expressing emotions and how that relates to anxiety and the recovery process. Uh, it's a topic I probably should have covered long ago because it gets talked about all the time. We're going to go over that today. Before we do very quickly, just a reminder that all the other ways to get information and help from me are on my website at the anxious truth.com. There are three really useful books on anxiety and recovery there you can check them out. Uh, my morning email newsletter and podcast is called The Anxious Morning. That's right on the homepage at The Anxious Truth also. Uh, and if you enjoy my work, I'm helping you, and you would like to find a way to support it and help keep it free of ads and sponsors, then there are ways to support this work at theanxioustruth.com slash support. So check that out if you are so inclined. But I appreciate each and every one of you coming back every week to give me your time and attention. I hope I am providing some value and some service. So this week we're going to talk about specifically crying. I want to kind of focus on that. And what it means, you know, in terms of expressing emotions as part of the anxiety and recovery process. So there's really two issues that come up around the topic of crying. The first one is sort of a procedural or mechanical issue. People worry that if they're if they cry when they're anxious or afraid or when they're in a panic, that that means that they're doing it wrong. So people ask all the time is crying an, an escape behavior is crying avoidance is crying wrong is crying a setback? No, it's none of those things. Like, when some people get anxious, they express it some ways, other people express it other ways. And you just might be a crier, there's no crime in that. Now, one of the things that I definitely want to point out right here at the beginning, for especially for you dudes watching, men cry too. So I know that there's a stigma attached to that the idea that men are not supposed to cry. Even in 2022, that's still pretty pervasive that crying is a problem for a guy. It is not. So I just want to acknowledge that that if you're a man watching or listening right now, we also cry like the recovery process made me much more emotional than I used to be. So I'm much more of a crier. Now I cried happy stuff. Sometimes I'm all right with that. Like I'm allowed to be human. And so are you. So I want to be clear that when we're talking about crying and expressing emotions as part of the recovery process, where this is not a female focused thing like this, this is a human focused thing. So if you're a dude, and you're a crier, that's okay. Really, it's okay. I promise. So the first problem, like I was saying, is like a mechanical thing. People think that there's a, it's procedurally wrong. If I cry, does that mean I'm avoiding? Is that avoidance? No, crying is not avoidance. Crying is an expression. That's okay. Um, crying does not mean a setback. Crying is not an error. Crying isn't doing it wrong. Like crying is not a failure to accept. Like crying is just crying. It's a thing that some humans do, some more than others. So when I used to be really anxious and I would panic, I had habits. I had ways to express that. Um, I would get silent, uh, I would uh, tap all over the place and poke and like tap at my chest and pull at my ear and touch my nose. And I had all kinds of habits and ways to express that anxious state. Some people re get really withdrawn, some people get very vocal. A lot of people speed up, I wrote a whole book about how we speed up when we get anxious. So that anxious state gets expressed in so many different ways across so many different like human beings. And one of the ways that some people express that is crying. And that's okay. If you're a crier, you are allowed to cry. It's not a crime. It's not an error. It's not avoidance. It's not it's not to mean you're not accepting or floating or whatever word you want to use. You just happen to express yourself that way. And that's okay. One of the most important things that we learn in the process of recovery is that everything about us is okay. So much of the problem is created when we become afraid of our own bodies and our own minds. And so many obstacles in recovery are based on people's misconceptions that they can't handle their own emotions, or their own forms of expression. And that's just not true. So while crying might be a little more practically difficult to accept as part of the process, I mean, I used to tap around and like fidget and do all kinds of ticks and stuff. 
but that wasn't that terribly intrusive. It was certainly noticeable, but it wasn't terribly intrusive. If you are a crier, especially if a strong cry, if you're ugly crying, you know, we use that funny term, ugly crying, that's okay. But I understand that might be a little bit more disruptive in terms of your daily routine. It is what it is. Part of this is learning that like, well, you know, I cry and that's okay. I'll just have to let that happen and let that end and just keep going. So I understand that there's a little bit of a practical consideration in that, you know, a really strong cry can interrupt what you're doing. I get that. Then it'll just have to interrupt what you're doing for a little while. That's okay. Let it out. If you have to let it out, it is not a crime and it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. So I, it was important for me to address that right off the jump here. Crying is not a procedurally incorrect part of recovery. If you are a natural crier, or if sometimes it just feels overwhelming and it gets to be too much and you break down a little bit, that's okay. So whether you cry every time you're anxious or once in a while, whatever, just let it go. It's okay. You are allowed to be fully human. You have a right to all of that humanity. That is not a mistake. Let me be really clear about that. So the second misconception around crying comes based on the end expressing of emotion, really, comes based on the idea that we interpret what that crying means, or we add a story on top of the crying. So I don't mean the mechanical stuff that I was just talking about, oh, it means I'm making a mistake. People will take crying and interpret it and add a story on top of it that doesn't have to be there at all. So the issue in this situation, I'm gonna give you two statements here. The first statement is, I cry because I am upset. So any human being walks up to you and says, well, I cry because I'm upset. You would think, all right, you would shrug your shoulders like, hey, is there anything I can do for you? That's fine. You would not question that in any way, shape, or form because that's what humans do. Then folks like us sometimes get into the trap of adding a second statement. I cry because I'm upset, and then I am upset because I cry. That second half, that when you flip it around, I am upset because I cry, that's not required. That is, there's no reason for that. So the second big issue that comes with crying as part of anxiety and recovery is that people will start to judge it. Uh, crying means that I'm never going to get better. Crying means that I'm not supposed to feel this. This is not a, an emotion I'm supposed to feel. I'm supposed to be feeling happy. I'm supposed to be engaged with the world, especially if you're dealing with loved ones or your kids or your partner or you're in a family situation where like somehow in your head you're thinking, oh, I'm supposed to feel love and attachment and, and joy in this situation, but I'm crying because I'm afraid, that means that something is wrong. I'm a failure emotionally somehow. That is absolutely 100% not true. So if you cry as a way to express yourself, that's totally okay and totally normal for some human beings. Like I cry because I'm upset and we could put anxious and afraid in the category of upset. You don't have to add a second half that says I'm upset now because I cry. There's no reason for that. That's just beating yourself up and you're adding interpretation and story on top of that that doesn't have to be there. And it's completely, in many cases, invalid and sometimes driven by irrational fear completely. There's no connection to reality at all. So this comes back to that theme that we talk about all the time where we fall into the trap of judging ourselves based on how we feel. I'm either I'm supposed to feel a certain way and I don't, so I'm going to be harsh on myself and declare that as a failure and something is wrong because I don't feel a certain way or something is wrong because I do feel a certain way, in which case there's no win there. Feel one way, it's wrong. Feel the other way, it's wrong. Like, what, give yourself a break. And the second problem with that is I'm going to interpret the fact that I am feeling this way as meaning that something is additionally wrong. So I'm anxious and afraid and I'm experiencing anxiety. I'm doing these hard things, these exposures. I'm in this challenging situation. That's, that's hard enough. Okay, I cry in that situation. Okay, now I have a second problem because now you're crying. No, you don't. You still have one problem. And you're allowed to express yourself within the context of that problem. So this is one of those things that to me sometimes feels a little bit heartbreaking. And it speaks to that, that idea that so often makes things difficult for people in recovery, that your emotions are too much. You should not feel certain things. You demand to feel certain ways in certain contexts. And if you don't feel exactly that way, you call yourself a failure or broken or something is wrong. Like, it is so important to understand here that part of this process is learning to navigate through all the emotional states that we experience. They're all allowed. We have a huge, wide range of emotional expression built into us as human beings. And as part of this process, 
when you're doing difficult things and you're meeting a challenge and you're feeling frustrated and overwhelmed and, and regretful and, and grieving over the loss of maybe time that you have lost to your agoraphobia, all these are natural like things that upset us and make us feel emotions. That's not wrong. And if you express some of that by crying, it's not an indicator of anything other than you are experiencing your humanity as part of this process. So there's absolutely no reason to judge yourself harshly or declare yourself some sort of broken person who is never going to recover because uh, I did my exposure and I, and I cried. And I can't tell you how many times I see that in the community almost daily, that somebody does an exposure or meets a challenge or does something hard and they immediately will throw in the towel and you know, raise the flag of white flag of surrender. That's it. This is never going to work. Square one. This It's not working for me. Well, why isn't it working? You just did a hard thing. But I was so sad and I was crying. Uh, okay. Well, part of doing a hard thing was experiencing an emotional reaction to it. That's also a hard thing, but that's also okay. So feeling emotions is okay, even though sometimes that's also a hard thing. So you know, taking a walk around the block for the agoraphobic or driving on the highway or not Googling your symptoms for the person with health anxiety. Those are really hard things. And when those things trigger emotions in us, sometimes for some people, feeling those emotions is a second hard thing. It's not a second problem, like my health anxiety is a problem. And now my emotions are a problem. No, no. Confronting my health anxiety is it the health anxiety is a problem. Confronting the health anxiety is a challenge. And feeling the emotions that come along with that challenge is just a second challenge, not a second problem. You understand? That's really important because you got to let yourself off the hook. Like, there's no reason to beat yourself up. Be nice to yourself. Respect the fact that you have emotions and understand that you were born with the ability to express these emotions. This is how we come from the factory. We don't get to decide whether we cry or don't. It just happens. Now, as you go through this process, and you begin to gain confidence and competence, and, and you, you don't, you're not a, as afraid of your own body and mind as you once were, the odds are extremely high that you will cry much less because you will feel less stress, less burden, less duress, right? You, you don't find yourself in distress because of how you feel anymore. And you will likely cry far less than you do right now. Okay, cool, bonus. But the fact of the matter is, if you do cry, it is simply not a disaster. So if you are one of those persons, people listening to me or watching me on YouTube or wherever you're consuming this, and you have this feeling that all of your emotions not only indicate a state, but also say something about you and should not be permitted, they're too much, they will overwhelm you, you can't handle them, it's too hard to feel things, you're going to have to adjust that and understand that this process that we're going through will make you feel things. And learning that you can feel those things successfully, you can move through them, you can handle those things, including the crying or otherwise expressing of that emotion is really important. It's part of the lessons we learn. We are not learning to try to engineer away anxiety or engineer away our fear or engineer away our emotions. And I've said this before, I will continue to say it as often I have to, as I have to. The recovery process is not learning to be a robot. It's not learning to be less human. It's learning to be a better human. And that includes accepting and embracing and moving through all of our emotional states because they are all allowed, all of them. That's, that's the deal on crying and expressing of emotion. So before I wrap it up, I do want to mention one case that does bear mentioning. So people who are having emotional regulation problems, and please just take a second and take a breath before you listen to what I'm about to say here. The, the fact that you may cry during an exposure does not mean that you suffer from emotional dysregulation. And, and your anxious mind will, will, may latch on to this and say, oh, see, I, I have to find ways to emotionally regulate. There are situations in certain conditions in mental health where people just have a hard time handling their emotions and regulating those emotions which generally in, in very simplest terms, people who have emotional dysregulation problems get completely carried away. Like it's not just that they're crying or they feel sad, they get completely carried away by those emotions to the point where sometimes there's a little bit of a detachment from the situation that even caused them, or there's a, an inability to get back to the reality that caused them. 
So people who are suffering from emotional dysregulation or emotional regulation problems, yes, sometimes that does have to be addressed. And with a qualified clinician, it can be addressed. It's, it's not a disaster. But that's not everybody listening to me right now. Your, your crying does not mean you are emotionally dysregulated. The person who flies into a blind rage and starts throwing things and kicking things and screaming at people when they get anxious or panicky, that might be an emotional dysregulation issue, but that can be addressed. And it often is. It's okay. That can be worked on. Okay, so I do want to address that. So for some folks, that is an issue. But for most, it is not. So if you are having emotional dysregulation issues, and you're working on that, then big fist bump to you. I know how hard that is. And my heart goes out to you for that. And I know that you can do that. But even in that situation, you can work on that. You can learn that. My people deal with those issues all the time, and they get better at handling their emotions and learning how to deal with them. So that is the deal on crying and generally expressing emotion. It is not wrong. It's not a mistake. It's not a setback. It doesn't mean that you're failing in your recovery. And especially, it does not mean that you have to add judgment to how you feel or what you're expressing. If you take anything out of this, you know, it would be those two things. Expressing emotion does not make me wrong, and expressing emotion does not require an interpretation of the expression of that emotion. It just is, and it's okay, right? I do not demand to feel certain ways, do not demand to never feel certain ways. We just have to be human and learn to handle all of that. what that means. Sometimes feeling things is hard, just like driving on the highway for some of you is really hard but we're here to do hard things together. And that, that's part of it. Feeling is a, just another challenge. It's not another problem, right? So, so there you go. And I guess, I guess I say that all the time. What am I going to do? We all have our little crutches, verbal crutches. I guess that's one of mine. All right. So that is the deal on crying and expressing emotions. If you're watching on YouTube, by all means, go ahead and comment. I will be happy to respond. If you're in the Facebook group, wherever comment on this, I'm happy to have the interaction and the questions and, and deal with you guys. It's like the most fun that I have in this thing that I do is interacting with all you guys. Um, and that's it. The episode is over. And you know because the music that is uh, Afterglow by Ben Drake. You hear me say it every week. Every week. Go find Ben and his music at bendrakemusic.com. He's just a good guy. So go support him too. He's a, he's a good dude and a friend of mine and, and, I, and I like Ben. Uh, tell him that I sent you. And as always, I will ask you, if you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe and the like button or comment because I, I love commenting on YouTube now. I'm all about the YouTube comments. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple, any place where you can rate and review the podcast, leave a five-star rating, maybe write a little review. It helps other people find the podcast. And that's what it's all about, to reach as many people as we can, help as many people as we can. And that's it. Thanks for coming by. I'll be here again next week for episode 200. Don't know what I'm going to say, but I am going to be here. And never forget, this is the way. Yeah, you're doing fine. Now in the city and you're living fast. No looking back or dwelling on the past You know you'll never get another chance So go and live your life Yeah, yeah, yeah Push through the pressure like an out of